Hi everybody, this is Pam Coey, and a lot of times I start my cold wax and oil paintings with mark making, and when I go to workshops and students try their mark making, uh, trying with graphite or charcoal or pencils or whatever it might be, maybe it's a crepe pass, they're always wondering, you know, are these marks going to smear? And so I'm going to do a couple tests here, keeping my palette super simple, just black and white, cold wax medium mixed with Galkid gel. And then I'm going to experiment with different kinds of mark making to see how much it smears. I personally don't care because I feel like it's usually happening in the lowest layers. And I know a lot of that will be covered up. And the reason I do mark making to begin with is just to warm up, get used to the amount of space I have to deal with. I do treat like a four square as one in the beginning. So I will go across the tape borders and treat the whole thing as one. But it is good to know like which kinds of marks are going to hold up to say the uh, progressive layers that happen and which ones will smear. So that's what this video is going to be about. But I just want to show you that this is kind of like a, a salt and pepper shaker. It's got some holes on top. I labeled this one with charcoal and this one is my graphite. And there is a difference. The charcoal is more coarse and the graphite is more fine. So those are two things I want to experiment with. I've got my cold wax medium here in this container. So I'm going to put some out on my palette here. It's just a plastic palette. In addition, although I'm keeping my palette simple, I am going to try some different kinds of oil pastel. These are Faber Castell. And then I also have these are like Pentel. They're made by uh, Secura. They're very dry to begin with. Like they're, they don't take any time to dry. So that's why they're, I feel they are compatible. Now these are just dry pastels, which I'm going to try out as well. So again, it's a simple um, oil and cold wax palette, but I'm also experimenting with mark making, which means that I might want to try some of these little colors here. Uh, so I'm going to just start out with normal mark making that I would do, and I've got a number of different pencils here. Here's a carpenter's pencil, so I can clean the end of that one off. This one is a black wing palomino, Kohenor graphite. This one is a charcoal stick. Let's see if I can see if that one's like that. That feels like charcoal. So we'll just do something like that to start with. Really loose, so that's charcoal. And then this is graphite, you can tell it's lighter. I just like to play first. And I will be making notes, you know, like what's what's gonna run when I put cold wax medium on here. This is just a carpenter's pencil and it's a graphite mark. The, the charcoal tends to be darker than the graphite. So that's an observation you can make. I have a super dark black that I like, which it's a black pencil. Um, both I've got a Rembrandt carbon, and then I also have my 8046. My favorite um, It's made by, uh, it's aquarellable, made by Stabilo 8046. And that's in the resource section of my um, website, artandsuccess.com. I just list the things that I use there, and oftentimes there's a link on where you can get it if you want to try it. This is a Lyra. Again, just making different marks, and uh, hopefully I will be able to remember which mark is which, but I can kind of remember. I'm just keeping out the ones aside here that I've used, and I will try to uh, jot down some notes then too as I do this, but I think for now that's probably enough. And what I'll do then is just take a little bit of my cold wax medium again, mixed with Galka gel, and just rub some on here. And the first test is like this, you know, and everything's an observation. So I know the charcoal being the way it is, um, that does tend to blur a lot. So charcoal is going to blur. So let me just write that down. That, um, so I'm just taking notes as I go here. Now, um, because my cold wax medium does get a little grungy, and that's okay because it can always be mixed with darker colors, but because I'm trying to sort of test this out here, here's just graphite. And graphite, for the most part, let's see here. 
I'd say graphite is pretty good. It's not going to run nearly as much. So uh, the graphite line seems to be okay. So I would just say graphite is going to be pretty much fine. This is my Stabilo down here. Again, pretty minimal. You get a little bit of movement, but you know, not much. So it kind of just is what it is. And the carpenter pencil was this guy here. I mean, part of this cold wax medium is a little bit grungy. So I'm trying to just look at the mark and I say carpenter pencil works very well. Just taking notes. So really the charcoal is kind of the one that's gonna smear a bit. Now I'm gonna just set this down and then just a little bit of say graphite powder. Um, I'm gonna put it where it's rather dry and you don't need much. And that's why it's really nice when it's in a shaker. So just a tiny bit there, any place where I don't have a lot of marks. And the reason I like this, you can take a little cosmetic pad like this, fold it over and just you know brush it in like this and get a really beautiful amorphous shape, depending on the direction you want to move it. Um, you can also just use a paper towel if you don't have a cosmetic cup. And in some ways that's nice too, because you don't get a lot of um, the pieces falling off of your cosmetic cup. Now this is the graphite. And if I just keep rubbing it, and if I touch where I had the cold wax medium, that's okay too. You can always brush that into cold wax medium and get a little bit different effect because it is more of a wet, kind of a wettish surface. Like that. So you can experiment with that. And then the charcoal powder is coarser, so I won't use a whole lot of that. I'm just going to put a little bit here and there. Even on top of the graphite, it's fine. It is darker, and so... I'm just going to do this. So you already get value differences, which is kind of cool. Now this is rubbing into the cold wax medium, and that's perfectly fine. Some of these dry mediums, you know, they're they're good for when it's wet or when it's dry. So you can kind of play around just with that, and that's really great. Now I've got some of these um, beautiful colors, and I'm just going to make a few marks and kind of just get some things started here you know with line maybe but the the palette's meant to be fairly simple so i'm not going to go too wild with the colors maybe i'll just stay with some of these earth tones for now so maybe just the green and it's kind of a burnt sienna main thing was i wanted to see if these are going to be smearing if i put cold wax medium over the top so that would be my Faber Castell, and just grab this, some clear over that, and just see how well. See, it holds up very well. So the Faber Castell works very well. The Pentel, which are the cheaper ones, if I just put a little bit of color on here, and since this color didn't really run much, so either one. Uh, they both do really well. So the pen towels, Faber Castell, oil pastels are fine. They don't run. So I put no blur. This way I take notes. And okay, so there's just a little bit of color on there. I haven't tried these dry ones yet. So staying with kind of a similar thing here. I'll take this beautiful kind of a burnt sienna and just pull that through. So you can go right through anything that already has the cold wax medium in it. It's not gonna hurt anything. And let's just see how this does. When you just go over a tiny bit of it, you can immediately see if it's going to be stable. Okay, that runs a little bit, I would say. But it's really nice to have some things that are going to blur or run a little bit and some things that don't. So I would say that the dry ones, these were not the oil pastels, these are the dry pastels, that these do run a bit more.
All right, now you might also have a stencil and, you know, usually you're going to be using a stencil with something like maybe graphite powder. So I would maybe set this down where it's relatively dry and put this on paper towel, Kleenex. Rather than just sprinkle it on top, you need to have a little bit more control. So that's where at least it has the sprinkle top, which does help. So let's try to get my kind of just spread it out a bit on your paper towel. And then it's going to be a little bit messy, but you can always um, brush your or tip your painting over a garbage can or bag and get rid of any extra. So now I'm just making some marks, and you could also use pencil if you wanted to get a really nice, uh, like dark and light, more of the tape. That's probably why that's not working too well. Okay, so there we go. Just gonna make some marks here. And whenever you use any type of stencil, especially when you're working with cold wax and oil, it's not like it's going to be uh, gonna stay super crisp edged because of the nature of this medium. But um, just, you know, if you have a stencil and you just take portions of it uh, and use it on all four of your squares or your four square, then you're likely to get more cohesion. It becomes a cohesion um, factor, I like to say. So now and you can turn this over so it's backwards. Just so that there's something there that came from the same source. Doesn't have to be the same letters, the same orientation or anything. Doesn't have to make sense. Like I like these shapes and that's why I'm using them. And I'm just trying it out. So as you can see, some will be lighter and some will be darker and, and whatever, that's fine. So right there, you've got a lot of marks. And again, you can tip this off the excess um, granules just over on um, trash can. That side. Then the excess will be gone. Right, so now I'm going to put some of this stuff aside, like these markers, not markers, but pastels, because I'm not going to be using a whole lot of those. And if I do anymore, they will be coming in toward the end. 